Okay. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, right? We have uh, class with you, and we explain uh, what is the application of Fourier series. Now uh, you will see in the next slide, we will derive a formula, and in that uh, derivation, we use the Fourier series for simplification. Okay. We neglect the higher order term. You see, uh, we will use only this amount in the Fourier series because the value of h, if it is very small, then you square it, it will get more, smaller value. So we can ignore the smaller value, uh, I'm sorry, higher order term. And still, you see, uh, we are not 100% right because you are not taking all the term from the Fourier series. So what you sacrificing? Accuracy, right? That means we make a assumption here, but how we'll know that our theory is right? That's why you will do the experiment, you will do the test, and you work in the, in the lab. This is one more example I am giving you that why you have a lot of a lab class, okay? So in the next live, we'll derive a formula that how you can figure out pressure of a fluid at a certain depth. For example, you have a bucket of water and you like to figure out the amount of pressure at the bottom of the bucket. You can figure out without formula because uh, if you know the volume of water, you figure out the weight, then divide by the area, uh, weight by area, you will get the uh, pressure. Okay. Somebody's mic is uh, to mute. Uh, Kausar Ahmed, your uh, okay. So you can you can figure out the pressure easily, but uh, you are you have a C and upper surface of C. What will be pressure at the depth of say two kilometer or one kilometer depth? I will figure out the pressure. In that case, you are not able to measure the quantity of water. You cannot figure out the weight, right? But uh, we are able to figure out by a formula. What is that formula? If this height is S and density of the fluid is rho, then pressure right over here, it will be P equal to S rho G. That means pressure depends on depth of the location and density of the fluid and also gravitational constant g right this formula we will derive now i can just give you this formula but still you need to know the how this formula came in i just make in uh, in home overnight or it came in from the mathematics okay again what is the fluid mechanics? We apply the law of engineering mechanics to the fluid. So you'll see how we'll apply those law in fluid mechanics in the next derivation, okay? So <clears throat> we'll measuring a formula or we derivating a formula to measure the pressure. So Right over here, it gives some introduction about the pressure. It's saying normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area of the surface is called fluid pressure. It is noted that it is uh, if an imaginary surface surface assume within a fluid body, the fluid pressure pressure and pressure force on that imaginary surface are exactly same 
as acting on any real surface. For example, you have a pond in your uh, home. So you like to put something under a depth H from the top surface of the pond. This is the top surface and this is the bottom surface of your pond or lake. And you like to keep something at a height, this height. And you need to know that how much pressure will be right over here. So how we can figure out? You have option that you put first that object at the bottom in the pond at a, for example, at a height uh, two meter. Then you measure the pressure, right? Instead, you just think on your table that, okay, I like to put a something at the bottom of the lake at two meter depth. So my pressure will be, I'll use this formula, P equal to H rho G. So this formula you are applying, that is actually the by ideal formula based on some assumption, right? But this amount of pressure and reality, uh, you got the pressure, both will be almost same. Again, nothing is 100% right. So there might be some variation, 0.5% or 1% or 2%, okay? So that it's saying, if you imagine a surface in your mind, then you do the mathematical calculation, you will exactly game the, get the same pressure. That is saying, for example, you are designing a submarine and it will, you know, staying um, under the sea, say about uh, 3.5 kilometer. And how, how, what will be pressure, top surface of the submarine, at the roof of the submarine? So submarine is not here, but you can calculate the amount of pressure from your uh, table, reading table, by using this formula, okay? Now, uh, how we can derive this uh, formula? At first, we need to consider a fluid element. A fluid element, it might be a triangular, might be a prism, or might be a cube, but it has finite volume, dimension non-zero. It has a density and also pressure, and it has a weight. Nothing you can ignore, okay? So um, we are talking about static fluid, static fluid. Fluid is not moving. So if you consider a fluid element, at the bottom of your lake or pond, I am thinking a cube, rectangular square cube in all dimension, or you can think as a rectangular, no problem, like a brick, okay? So obviously it has a volume, it has a density, and inside also it has a pressure, it has a weight. So weight will work directly downward, right? So this Q is remain, or fluid element remain static condition under the lake. But why remain static? Still, it has a weight. So it is not moving upward, it is not moving to our right or to our left. So we need to figure out that what type of force is working in that uh, fluid element and how much will be pressure right at the top surface of the fluid element, okay? So uh, we will think, a, you say right over here, infinite small fluid element. That means very small fluid element, uh, dimension of each side, dx, dy, dz, at a point in a static mass of fluid. And let's be the intensity at the center of the element. That means we think that the center of the element 
pressure is P. Now we will uh, derive this uh, formula. Okay. So uh, before we start, I just give you fundamental idea that how we will derive, right? So what I am thinking that at the center of the cube, right? Pressure is P. Pressure is P right over here. How much pressure will be left side and right side? How we can figure out? Another thing, we need to figure out a coordinate system. So along this direction is Y, this direction is X, and vertical direction is Z. Now, in the cube, if I look in the front view, so right over here, pressure is P. I like to know or I like to figure out how much the pressure will be right over here and right over here. How will you figure out? By mathematics. Anyone? What is my this distance from here to here? From here to here, distance is dy, right? So what is the distance? from center point to this point, dy by two, right? Yes, sir. And this one also dy by two, these two. But y is increasing along this side, right? So you know the value, pressure, at a distance x. So not the x, y at a location. But what will be the pressure? right in the right over here, what you can use. First, we will use the Taylor series because this location we know the pressure and we need to know what will be the pressure at X plus H distance. So what will be the H in that case? H will be my dy by two, the right side. But if I consider the left side, then what will be my H? In that case, H will be minus dy by two. Okay, this is my H. Then we will use the Taylor series, figure out the pressure right over here, right over here. Similarly, along this direction, along uh, X direction, the center pressure is given. So we can figure out the pressure. Uh, write this surface and this surface by using Taylor series, okay? Uh, just refresh your mind again that uh, right over here is a Taylor series. You know value at X, what will be value at X plus H, okay? Now, if you found the pressure right over here and right over here, you found the pressure, then you can easily figure out the force in that side because uh, pressure equal to pressure equal to force by area. So your F equal to pressure times area and you see if i know the pressure over here i can get the area it is dx into dz so i get the force similarly right over here on the left side area will be same right dx into dy uh, then you multiply with the pressure you will get the force so this full element is expressing force from this side and also from this side, but it is not moving. What does it mean? Summation of force equal to zero along Y axis as per engineering mechanics. Similarly, we will use summation of force along Z axis equal to zero and also along X axis equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so far, any question? No? Okay. And 
will uh, derive the formula by using other file that is math cut file that will be easier to understand okay did you see the file hello yes sir okay now uh, before you derive the formula you need to make some assumption what assumption you will think uh, the fluid is ideal no viscosity fluid is static not moving this is one assumption and you considering a very small uh, fluid element with dimension dx dy dz and pressure at the center of the fluid element is p that will be your assumption so every formula you derive at first you need to have assumption then you derive the uh, formula so most of the time what i see the student uh, directly derive the formula even i see uh, you don't draw the figure so even you are right you write the all the equation but you are doing without drawing figure you are deriving without assumption then what will happen your mark will be deducted so sometime you say after exam that my answer is right why i got a less number so those are the reason okay uh, similarly in the queue right over here somebody drawing very nicely and somebody drawing like he don't know what is drawing it is a brick but he make it a circle sphere and how he will get the mark the mark will be reduced okay so let's see how we can derive okay at first i put the fourier series again over here and some formula that p equal to a by a so a p equal to p a now at the center pressure is p i'll now need to figure out pressure this side and this side so in that case my a will be dy by 2 dz by 2 dx by 2 if you figure out the pressure right over here then your a will be minus dy by 2 but if you figure on the right side that the positive side your a will be positive dy by 2 okay now uh, let's uh, draw the cube that you might uh, easily understand so this is the q right along this axis is y right i'm not writing just look in the figure this axis z along this axis x now i like to figure out the uh, pressure uh, could you hold down uh, one thing that uh, this file is little bit shortcut okay let me see i might have a one more file that uh, has more explanation let's see one second nothing over there okay uh, let's uh, go with that one
Okay, it seems like uh, both are uh, same file, but uh, did you able to see the file? Hello? No, sir. No? Okay. Uh, so let me stop the sharing and start it again. What about now? You able to see, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. So I was drawing a cube that already already gone. Let's uh, draw it again. So this is my key. At the center, I know that pressure is P. Right over here is center is P. Now, I like to figure out pressure at this surface. So in that case, what is my ACE? If I derive right over here, my ACE equal to dy divided by two, right? Now, fx is p or fy, if I say fy, or such say fx as per foliar formula, this equal to p. That means at the center is p. So what will be the pressure if at x plus h? that we will need to, I'm sorry, this we need to figure out, okay? So, if you look in the uh, Taylor series, what will be pressure at X plus H, that will be, that mean I, if I say, let me little bit keep it over here, this figure, or, I can move it to the right over here. Okay. So I need to figure out pressure at uh, x plus dx by 2 at this location instead of at x. Okay. So this equal to f of x. What is my f of x? P. P plus a prime x, my first derivative of p, right? So I can say it will be del by del x, del x into p, or you can just say del p by del x times s. So what is my ace over here? dy by two. So instead of x, say I put y. So this will be dy. Instead of in the bracket, I am putting p over here. Then this term will be ace, right? So what is my ace? dy by two dy by 2. Then the higher order term, but we are neglecting. So this is my pressure. This pressure, where it is working? Working right over here, this surface, right? So with the arrow, I'm mentioning pressure working, this pressure working in the right side. So how much pressure working in the left side, working along this direction, by same m amount, just will be negative sign. That means, if I copy, keep it over here, this pressure will be at distance, there will be minus, and here will be minus, okay? So we found the pressure 
from the Taylor series. Now, we'll do the force balance. How we can do it? We are saying right over here, summation of force along y direction. This direction is zero. So at first, you figure out the force in this surface. So this distance is dx and height is dz. So what will be the area? dx into dz. Then you multiply the area. What is the area? Uh, is this one and what is the pressure? P minus del P by del Y, dy by two. So I say multiply by the, this is pressure, this is the area. Then right hand side is working negative Y direction. So minus, how much the pressure? Right over here. This is uh, P del P by del Y into del Y by two. So this value into you multiply this area. So this length is dx, height is dz. So this is the area, okay? This equal to zero. Uh, anyone has any question? How we do the, figure out the pressure and the force balance? Anyone? No? Hello? I think uh, our time is over. Um, hello, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're, you're not giving any response. Okay, uh, it seems like um, we have four minutes to discuss. Okay, I stop the screen sharing again.